This is just another uh, satellite LNB uh, pulled from a scrap pile, hence the rather considerable amount of corrosion on the outer casing, which is I'm guessing probably magnesium, judging by just the pick feel of it. Uh, inside, some kind of a hybrid fiberglass and exotic black magic uh, RF type material, probably um, this is purple stuff. But it's a composite of this and some type of fiberglass, probably FR4. And by the feel of it, it's probably some kind of a Rogers type material. Or that, or um, just have the flashlight as a prop to hold the thing up. Um, just something that has a fairly stable dielectric properties because, again, there's some. Our black magic stuff is very, very, very um, particular as far as that's concerned. There's this, which is the uh, little assembly that has the two uh, antennas on it. So there's some kind of a little plastic uh, wedge in there that's been glued into the um, interior of the feed horn, as well as this outer cap, which is just to keep dust and crap and whatnot. Uh, out because the stuff being RF black magic doesn't like all kinds of environmental contamination because it throws off the um, RF properties. And then there's the two antennas offset at 90 degree angles to each other. And one of them has a bit of a notch and appears overall slightly longer than this one, so those are probably t for two slightly different frequencies. And there's a bunch of little jaggy bits on the traces there that's probably filtering of some sort couple of RF FETs. There's that series of three parallel traces, the two outside ones being connected to the uh, output sides of the two FETs, and the center one going into this um, uh, third FET serving as a, a mixer post amplifier. Then there's this filter which is, um, because of the way the mixer would work, there'd be something, um, or there's probably um, intermodulation and whatnot and this is just um, from the mixer to and that's just to cut out any intermod as well as some indifference which is intermod pretty much uh, intermodulation just crap a um, 100 ohm resistor which is probably serving as uh, some kind of impedance matching don't know whether or not this means that this device is um, also 100 ohms and there's um, those two uh, impedances in parallel form 50 ohm impedance or this is high impedance and they need a low impedance um, output stage for this or output of this filter for it to work properly again not really familiar with a lot of this black magic stuff then there's this device um, marked RAY 239791K749 that is probably gallium arsenide semiconductor based because that's used in a lot of um, RF devices that is serving as probably a mixer amplifier and might also do some filtering stuff combining the output signal from the uh, or the um, signal from the two antennas after it's been mixed and um, filtered with the um, probably the actual frequency that these work at is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 gigacycles and the output on the RF out to the uh, cable box which just goes over standard um, 50 ohm television coax is um, but in the gigacycle range so this is probably a, either 9 or 11 gigacycles because um, and that just uh, the sum of the difference which is then filtered out probably by that thing uh, this is a, a dielectric resonant oscillator or DRO and there's a um, I think that's a that's a 51 ohm resistor right there um, Lots of really tiny packages, like it's a, it's a 0603, and a lot of these caps and resistors over here are 0402s. And there's that thing, other stuff that's filtering that, was, that would still be inside the filtering can, which is all along this really thick trace with all the via stitching. That's all denotes where there was a um, filtering can at one time, although that disappeared. Then there's this um, network of 50402 resistors. Those are probably some kind of a um, impedance matching network. 
and then there's that more filtering DC blocking cap and then that thing right there is the uh, goes to the uh, central connection of the um, F connector which is the coax out to the cable box then there's this um, strip line inductor that's again just an RF block to keep um, RF out of the um, DC supply section which consists of this rectification or that's a um, that's a protection diode probably for surges and whatnot um, a 78M08 um, 8 volt potential regulator a couple of uh, caps that just forms an L, a passive uh, LC filter just to keep RF and crap off of the um, DC supply line and then that supplies the one trace which goes th through that cap but that's presumably ground goes through this uh, zero ohm jumper it just says zero 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 on it through a trace um, over there goes by this um, and connects to this uh, SOT23 device but it looks like one of the things is unconnected so that might be some kind of a protection diode or something because unless they've got something really weird like a via in pad on that one third pad that isn't connected to anything which would be bad practice and there's plenty of space or maybe it's I don't know what they're doing but I'm not really familiar with a lot of the sort of black magic gif and then the trace just continues on and of course it's extremely thin which you can get away with because these are extremely low power devices and um, but also that's th that means that the trace is very high inductance and that helps um, attenuate any crap on it then there's another um, bypass cap and it just connects to that IC right there and then Another trace up there and that just powers this FET driver that is a ZNBG3010 and that's just supplying all the bias potentials for the three FETs and you can see there's a bunch of up here which are really just RLC um, passive filters to keep any noise that these traces may pick up from RF over there and it bounces around inside the can out of the um, microwave uh, part of the uh, RF uh, signal path but also help keep crap in here, in here. And as you can see, very thin trace goes to each one exiting the RF signal path, hooks up to one of these uh, big um, pads. Then there's also resistors and capacitors. The resistors provide loading, and the caps are just DC blocks. Or those just to shunt any RF to ground. And then there's some unpopulated spots up by the feed horn input, and uh, there's one populated there. And don't know what a lot of that stuff's doing, but again, not a whole lot of stuff in this thing. Really, just an input amplifier and intermediate frequency stage. And because a lot of this uh, hype of the um, 10 gigacycle RF would require all kinds of um, black magic. As far as things like feed horns, it's much easier to just, especially in a residential application where obviously these kinds of things are on a budget, just do all the black magic and one thing on the roof and then send uh, the proportionally fairly low conventional frequency stuff, you know, only gigacycle range, um, through just television coax where over the signal runs of not more than a few tens of feet, there wouldn't be any really substantial losses. And also this one had a, this one had a sealed can which was sealed in some kind of a potting although fortunately there wasn't any potting in here which obviously you wouldn't want because that would really cause problems with the um, RF signal properties of this thing and especially since the uh, shielding can on this thing wasn't liquid tight and also one more thing is on the shielding can there was a tuning screw right over this little pink thing that's just for tuning the, D that's just for tuning the DRO but it's just another random trinket